In lesson 7.2, we talked about the disk method for finding volumes of solids, things that we were rotating. Um, and remember the disk method, we were thinking about our three-dimensional object and slicing it into little disks or circles. And so our formula for volume was based on the area of a circle. Okay, so our volume was pi, and then we took all of the radiuses, because remember there's infinitely many, many circles. So we took whatever the function of our radius was and squared it. But it was still based on that um, volume was based on all of those circles. So the area of all those circles, infinitely many added together. And then remember we had the adjustment if we had a hole in these. And so instead it was the washer method. Um, and that's where we took pi and we did the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. Okay, so that's the disk and the washer method. Um, and those are great. Uh, they work really well. Uh, sometimes they can get a little complicated. And so having another method is good. There is another method for finding volume. It's called the shell method. And what we're doing is instead of slicing our object into uh, disks, I want you to think of taking a piece of paper and wrapping it so it's a cylinder. So we're creating all of these cylinders that nest inside each other. So think about like, um, like the little nesting dolls or cups that will nest inside each other, but these are super thin cylinders. Okay, so imagine taking a piece of paper and circling it around to make a cylinder out of it. Um, so they're, you know, paper thin. And then we're going to do infinitely many of these cylinders all together till eventually you create a solid. Um, I think the sticks of dum dum suckers are made this way because it's just wrapped paper and you just wrapped so many layers of paper that eventually you have a 3D object. So I want to show you where the shell method comes from. So this is the first part of our notes um, on 7.3, the shell method. You do not need to write this part down, okay? I want you to see where the shell method comes from. I will tell you the part that you need to write down in your notes. All right, so we are going to create these shells. Um, we need to establish a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about the height of our cylinder, uh, which is this right here. That's going to be our height. Wow, that was not straight at all. Let's try that again. There it is. Well, close enough. Okay, that's our height. Um, P is going to be the distance from the axis that we're rotating around to the center of the shell. Okay, so right there, not the inside and not the outside, the actual center of it. So that's P. And then W is actually this width of the shell. Okay. Um, so when we want to find the outer radius, okay, remember this P value only goes to the middle of that shell. So our outer radius is P plus W over 2, so half of the width of that shell. And then the inner radius is P minus W over 2. All right, so if we want to find the volume of the cylinder, um, we have to find the volume of the cylinder and then subtract the volume of that hole. So let's do that real quick. Uh, the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. So we have pi, our radius is p plus w over 2. And then h is just the height. And then the volume of the hole is going to be pi, and that's the inner radius, p minus w over 2 squared h. Okay, now that we have that, we're just going to do a little bit of algebra with this. Um, I'm going to write pi h right here, and then I'm going to foil this out, expand it. So that's going to give us p squared plus 2p w over 2. Um, of course, those twos are going to cancel. Plus w squared over 4. Minus, and I'm just going to write the pi h together. And I'm going to foil out this one. So p squared minus 2 p w over 2 plus w squared over 4. And those twos cancel. All right, next step. We get 
pi h. Uh, notice we can factor out the pi h because these both have pi h, so I'm going to factor that out. And then let's see what's left. Uh, once I factor that out, let's get a different color here. Um, this minus is going to distribute to all of these. Okay, so we get p squared minus p squared. So those are going to cancel. And then we have w squared over 4 minus w squared over 4. So those are going to cancel. So the only thing we have left is this. We have pw and then minus minus. This will be plus pw. So when that's all said and done, we get 2pw. All right, let me just rearrange this and show you what we have. We have 2 pi times p times h times w. Now, let's talk about what all of those pieces are. p is the average radius. h is, of course, the height of our cylinder. And w is the thickness. And then we just have 2 pi. Okay, so remember, we're taking an infinite number of these cylinders. These cylinders all have a thickness that's teeny tiny. Okay, so this thickness is either going to be dx or our dy. Okay, just teeny, teeny, tiny thickness. Okay, the height is going to be determined by uh, whatever our graph is. And then the radius. Remember, we have infinite number of these cylinders. They're getting smaller and smaller. So this radius, there's going to be a lot of those. That determines all of our uh, different cylinders. Um, so we're going to have to do all of them. And that's where our integration is going to come in. Okay, so when we put this all together, this is the shell method. Okay, and so the stuff in the box here, that's what you want to put in your notes. Okay, so to find the volume of a solid using the shell method, we've got this 2 pi and then an integral of p of y, h of y times dy, okay? And what those pieces mean, um, you're always gonna have that two pi out front. p of y is a function of the radius. h of y is the function that gives the height. And then the dy or the dx is that thickness, okay? So it's exactly what we had up at the top. Um, we can do this in terms of y, or of course we can do this in terms of x. Now, the shell method is different than disk method because if you have a horizontal axis of revolution, you're in dy. That is exactly opposite of what disk method was. If you have a vertical axis of revolution, then you need everything in terms of x. Um, so a way you can remember this, the shell method is it's parallel to its axis of revolution um, is what you're using. So we'll see lots of examples, but that's something I want you to remember is that it is exactly the opposite of what we saw in the disk and shell method. So make sure you've got this part written down in your notes, this here in your box, and I will show you how to use this in the next video.